Joined today by Michael Cooper, Member of Parliament for St. Albert Edmonton, and he's the leading conservative member, at least in terms of the publicity and the work on a on the Standing Committee on Procedure on House Affairs, which has been investigating Chinese interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. Now, Michael, we, I, as I was preparing this interview, the news never stops. I understand that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has said he does not want a public inquiry, says he's willing to tolerate something called a special rapporteur. Now, do you, does anyone even know what that is? It's someone who's going to appoint, uh, report back to the Prime Minister. And then what he has also announced is that ENSICOP, uh, which is a committee comprised of members of parliament and senators, but that is not a parliamentary committee, that does not have the powers of parliamentary committees, including compelling witnesses, that meets in secret and that prepares a report that is redacted by the PMO to be tasked with getting to the bottom of Beijing's interference in the last two elections. It is a complete smokescreen. It is the opposite of what CSIS has called on the Prime Minister to do in the face of interference, and that is to provide sunshine and transparency. Uh, what he wants to do is bury it in a committee that meets behind closed doors, and that, mm -hmm. again, significantly, that it is the PMO that ultimately redacts the report, even though I would submit, given what we know, the Prime Minister is in, in a conflict in this matter. There are real questions about uh, what he knew, when he knew it, and what he failed to do in the face of Beijing's interference in the last two federal elections that took place under his watch as Prime Minister. Now, Dustin Trudeau can talk about having this special rapporteur all he wants, but if the House of Commons votes for a public inquiry, then there will be a public inquiry. Is that not correct? Well, it's, it really is up to the government to establish one, and uh, there needs to be a public inquiry. We need to get to the bottom of this, but we also need to ensure that the parliamentary committee that is tasked with undertaking this study on foreign interference is able to do its job in a compelling, a bringing witnesses to committee uh, to see that relevant documents are produced to the committee. And up until now, what we have seen is that the Liberals, with the support of their NDP coalition partner, have shielded PMO officials, including the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, who is a key witness uh, to getting to the bottom of what the Prime Minister knew, when he knew it, and what he did or didn't do about it. And that's it's especially critical that we hear from Katie Telford, given the scandalous uh, report uh, from Global News, that senior PMO officials were briefed by CSIS about Beijing's interference in 2019 and did nothing about it. They turned a blind eye to Beijing's interference, and that interference more specifically involved uh, support from Beijing's Toronto consulate to support a liberal candidate, now sitting MP, in his nomination. When the PMO officials were informed, they brushed it under the rug, but even worse, potentially, uh, this was a reportedly a classified meeting. They then reportedly leaked that classified information to that liberal candidate. So it's absolutely critical here that we hear from the PMO. And uh, up until now, uh, the prime minister has uh, obstructed, uh, deflected, and, uh, and refused to cooperate. And uh, one wonders why. Yeah. Well, so the committee voted six to five to have a public inquiry. Will the House itself be voting on whether or not to have a public inquiry? Well, we would like the, we're waiting for the chair of the Procedure and House Affairs Committee to actually report back to the House. The motion called for that to happen, so I would expect that that will happen, and then uh, a concurrence motion could be moved. But uh, we need a public inquiry. Uh, really, uh, it, it is critical that 
we have a public inquiry, uh, but one that isn't uh, decided by the prime minister as to who heads that inquiry. Uh, it's why in the motion passed at PROC, which is a non-binding motion, by the way, it's important to emphasize it's a non-binding motion, but it mm. provided for that at, a, that at the end of the day, whoever heads this inquiry must have the support of all of the recognized parties in the House of Commons. So the Prime Minister can't do what he did with the review of the 2021 election, which was to uh, appoint uh, a friend, the former uh, CEO of the Trudeau Foundation, who actually was involved, if you can believe it, in accepting a $200,000 contribution to the Trudeau Foundation from a Beijing communist advisor. And so someone who at the very least had a perceived conflict and may very well have had a real conflict uh, in undertaking a review in an election uh, that is in, in which there are a lot of questions about interference by Beijing to help the liberals win. It should never have happened and he can't do get away to do this in the case of the public inquiry. Okay. So if there is a public inquiry, the work of your committee, the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs, will continue to investigate as well. Conservatives are calling for the committee to continue. It's imperative that it continue. Uh, a public inquiry is one avenue, but it's important to recognize that a public inquiry can take a long time. And uh, mm. it's important that we hear from key witnesses like Katie Telford, not in six months, but now. There are pressing questions that need to be answered, and the only forum where that can happen is at the PROC committee. Yes. Are you concerned that the NDP, uh, not so much the bloc, but we've heard Peter Julian make some waves about the public inquiry focusing on, on Russia and Ukraine. He seems to want to diffuse the focus here. Is that a concern of yours? It is. Uh, foreign interference by, by Russia, by Iran, these are all uh, serious issues. But here we have very specific uh, allegations, specific revelations based upon CSIS documents uh, that have been uh, reviewed by reputable journalists as well as uh, documents that have been released to our committee uh, about uh, serious interference efforts by Beijing in not one but two elections. And so we need to get to the bottom of those very specific allegations, those revelations. I shouldn't just say they're allegations because we know it has happened. It's a question of to what extent it happened and what did the prime minister know. And so to go on a, a having an inquiry with a, a wide mandate basically buries potentially uh, getting to the bottom of these very specific allegations. It's, it's why it needs to be targeted. Now, I've noticed you've been very careful, as well as your, your leader, Pierre, Pierre Polyev, has been very careful to refer to the political in interference as coming from Beijing. I I'm curious as to whether this is, uh, this is because you know Justin Trudeau has a tendency to smear anybody who uses terms like Chinese, and are you concerned that this could be construed as being an attack on Asian Canadians or something like that? Is there a reason you're saying Beijing, not China? Well, for, first of all, Chinese Canadians are not responsible for this interference. They have nothing to do with this interference. What Who has to do with it is the Beijing Communist Party. The Beijing-based Communist Party is responsible for this interference. And it's very important to recognize that and the fact that Chinese Canadians are victims of this interference by Beijing. So in, in a sense, you're intercepting Trudeau's criticism because he's already suggested that if we, if we investigate Chinese interference, it's somehow an attack on Asian Canadians. And that's, he, he does this consistently every time he's challenged, he resorts to the racial smears. It, it's and, part of the Prime Minister's effort to deflect to blame others, to do everything other than answer basic questions and be held accountable for what I believe is 
the fact that he turned a blind eye uh, to Beijing's interference in our elections, that he was prepared to turn a blind eye so long as such interference uh, benefited the fortunes of the Liberal Party. So do you anticipate getting Trudeau's chief of staff, Katie Telford, in front of your committee, if not in front of a public inquiry, but at least in front of your committee? I will be bringing forward a motion tomorrow at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee to call on her for to, to appear before the committee. Uh, the NDP blocked our efforts not once but three times. Uh, so tomorrow we'll see what the NDP does. They have a choice. Uh, they can join us in working to get to the bottom of Beijing's interference in our elections, or they can do what they have done up until now, and that, that is do the bidding of the Prime Minister's office. But uh, Jagmeet uh, Singh has been quite emphatic about his desire to have a public inquiry in this. Do you, do you think this is all posturing on, the, on behalf of the NDP? We'll see what happens tomorrow, but the NDP at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee shielded Katie Telford three times. They also have worked hand-in-hand hand with the Liberals to block the production of relevant documents. Uh, we want a process of production that leads to as much transparency as possible. Uh, and what we have right now is uh, a production process uh, that allows for uh, significant, significant redactions that has resulted in pages and pages of blank pages. And so what we have put forward uh, in previous motions is for the parliamentary law clerk, who is independent, to do the vetting. A parliamentary law clerk is someone who is uh, independent. Uh, they have a national security clearance to make appropriate redactions, having regard for national security issues, but at the same time maximizing uh, the amount of transparency as to what the committee can see in the way of documents produced. Justin Trudeau has been through an enormous amount of scandal for any prime minister. I mean, in terms of his professional scandal, he somehow survived the SNE Lavalin scandal. He he got, he got through the We Charity scandal. On a personal level, he somehow managed to get through the blackface scandal to the point where he couldn't even remember how many times he did blackface on video and in in pictures he did it so many times and yet still has the gall to call his political opponents racist do you think this might be the the final straw for justin trudeau can he get through this one we'll have to see where the evidence takes us and there are a lot of questions about what the prime minister knew uh, his national security advisor indicated at the proc committee when I pressed her, that he was briefed multiple times. So that begs the question, what did he do about it? And by all indications, he did nothing about it. And that is scandalous. It's scandalous that we have a prime minister who ref has refused to take this kind of interference by Beijing seriously. And, um, and so he needs to be held accountable. And we need to get answers. And that process continues tomorrow uh, with the motion that I will be bringing forward for uh, essentially the fourth time. Hopefully the NDP will join us in, in getting some of that transparency that Canadians deserve. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. I, I just wanted to read you a couple of comments. Our Western Standard readers are completely compelled with the story and, and with the work you're doing on, on this story. And one of the readers <laughs> notes here, I have never noticed Michael Cooper till now. I definitely want to shake his hand. And he says, thank you for your hard work. Another reader says, call an election and put them all in jail. <laughs> and we have been getting like literally hundreds of responses. Your, your work has been noticed, uh, Michael. Uh, I think you're doing a fantastic job. And I'm going to continue to cover this story. I've covered Justin Trudeau for most of his professional life. 
largely as a columnist, but for five years uh, for a U.S. publication that could never understand why Canadians put him in the highest office in the world. <laughs> but we all will be watching with bated breath to see what, what happens with this. So I'd like to thank you, uh, Michael Cooper, Conservative Member of Parliament from Edmonton, St. Albert, leading member of the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs, which is looking in to Chinese interference in Canadian elections. Thank you for joining us, Michael, and for David Creighton and the Western Standard. We'll be talking to you again soon, I hope. Thank you, David. Hi, it's David Creighton here for Creighton's Right. I hope you're enjoying this channel as much as I enjoy putting the material on here. This is not just about politics. I sing some of my favorite songs from the Great American Songbook. And you can also watch my latest show with the Western Standard, which is Auto Exposed, where we do some of the news you're not going to hear anywhere else. But please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. If you want to be part of this station, please be a subscriber. We want you.